And Commissioner Batchelor, would you lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance to officially start our meeting? Yes, thank you. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item this morning on the agenda is item B, approval of regular session minutes of April 26, 2021. Board, we reviewed these minutes. We got them in advance. Are there any corrections or deletions? None. Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. We have a proclamation this morning. I assumed that we would have um, Tina Pocock on Zoom. Is she with us this morning? Or Tim Deck? Who's with us? Tina. Tina. Okay. Good morning. Morning. Our proclamation today is for the Foster Care Recognition and Recruitment Month in Claremont County. Whereas the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services is fortunate to have more than 76 dedicated foster families that help provide care to over 89 children in agency foster homes and 112 children in other placements who find themselves in agency custody due to abuse and neglect issues. And whereas statewide, there are nearly 16,000 children in out-of-home placements and a shortage of foster families. And whereas foster families open their homes and their hearts to help children in need, play a vital role in helping children and the families heal and reconnect, and launch children into successful adulthood. And whereas dedicated foster families frequently adopt foster children, resulting in a greater need for more foster families. And whereas we, there are numerous individuals, public and private organizations, who work diligently to ensure the children have a temporary or permanent safe and loving home, and work to increase public awareness in the importance of foster care. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2021 as Foster Care Recognition and Recruitment Month in Claremont County, and we commend this observance to our citizens as an opportunity to celebrate foster and adoptive families and spread awareness on behalf of the foster children in Claremont County who are waiting for a loving home. We further encourage the community, businesses, groups, schools, faith-based organizations, and families to help change the life by sharing their hearts, open their homes, and offer to help children in foster care, foster parents, and the child welfare professional staff working with them during this month and throughout the year. And this proclamation is brought to you by Claire B. Corcoran, myself as president, David L. Painter, Vice President, and Bonnie J. Batchelor as a member of this board. We thank you for your, you and your staff and everyone in that agency for what you do for our children in Claremont County. Thank you, Tina, for being with us this morning. And the door's open. Go ahead. You can talk. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for your time and for acknowledging the needs of the families in our community. As you stated, foster care plays a specific role in child welfare. It is designed to help provide a safe and stable environment for children during some of the most difficult times in their lives. Foster care is intended to be a safe haven for children and their parents, a place where children feel that they are always welcomed, valued, seen, heard, and loved. A place that they feel accepted for who they are and no matter what they have been through. It is our mission to ensure that each child has a home to call their own until they are able to return to their family's home or we find permanency for them. At Claremont County Children Protective Services, we believe that children and youth should remain in their communities, in their schools, and surrounded by their own supports. Children and youth thrive and do better in a family setting. A family setting is key to minimizing trauma. We value and commend our current foster families and the dedication to their role in the child and family's lives. There is value in the support that each foster parent can bring to the child and their parents through the process that no one else can provide. Without our foster families, 
we could not be able to provide the needed setting for children and youth during the, these most fragile times. So we thank each of you. We truly need foster parents who are willing to provide a home for our youth. Youth ages 13 and up are sadly one of the hardest populations to place in a foster home. Teens need love and support too. Many of our teens need to be reassured that they are not alone and that someone will be there for them no matter what. We are asking our community to help keep our youth in Claremont. At the end of the day, not only do we need to support, but we more importantly, our youth and children do. Every child and youth deserves to have a safe place to call home in every moment of their life. So if you are interested, we are asking for foster parents. Please contact 513-732-7765 or go to our website at claremontforkids.org. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Tina, to you and your staff for all you do. Great work. And to all those foster parents out there who've stepped up to help our children. Thank you. We're going to now move to item G. We're going to move it up underneath this proclamation um, for county staff elected official discussions. Um, Julia Nisbet, are you with us this morning from the health department? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thanks for having me uh, this morning. So just to kind of give a little brief update here on where we're at with COVID-19, um, case rates are down to um, 82 per 100,000 um, this morning when, when I kind of went to check and see where we're at. We have been down under 100 for um, a little over a week now, which is, is great that we're kind of still, although the downward trend has slowed, we are still um, in that kind of downward um, trend. I will say the last kind of couple of days, we do have some, some spikes up in our data, but we normally need to give it a couple of days to let that kind of see if it's gonna kind of continue um, or if it's just a, an influx in data um, potentially from, from something. So we'll just kind of keep to monitor that. Um, vaccination rates, uh, we're continuing to, to vaccinate individuals. So we have a little over 37% of the population who has started vaccination um, and that's almost 77,000 individuals in the county. And then as far as completed vaccination, um, almost 60,000, <clears> so um, about 29% on that. Um, very close to what, what the rate is throughout the state. Um, we have been over kind of the last week and then moving into next week, we will be between um, Public Health, um, Health Source of Ohio and Mercy Claremont. We will all be um, providing vaccines, vaccines in um, each one of the school districts. Uh, to make sure we can try to target those 16 um, and up individuals who want to be vaccinated um, on it. So this week we are doing um, Milford, Goshen, and Live Oaks. Um, Health Source of Ohio will be picking up Williamsburg and uh, West Claremont, um, as well as Mercy will be picking up Claremont Northeastern this Friday. And then next week we will be finishing up with Felicity, New Richmond, and Batavia. Obviously we'll go back in three weeks to, to finish up any second doses we have there. Um, additionally, you know, we're not seeing the large numbers up at UC Claremont um, anymore. So over the next few weeks, we'll be looking at transitioning um, kind of our routine daily clinic that we do for first doses back into our clinic space um, that we use regularly on Claremont Center Drive. So um, we will still be finishing up probably most of our first doses over the next couple of weeks up at UC um, and then moving some of our first doses back. And then really we're looking more at different places we can be out and about in the community where it's um, convenient for people, um, people who may struggle with transportation or you know, um, appointments that occur during the day. We have um, several things that we're working on as far as lining up for evening clinics. I do wanna um, say thank you to our schools because all of them opened their doors to allow those school-based clinics to be community-based clinics. So anyone from the community is welcome to come to the schools for those um, on it. We do ask that people register, but we will accept walk-ins um, at any of our, our clinics. Really the reason we do ask for registration is just because we need to know how much vaccine, particularly if we're off-site somewhere, how much vaccine that we bring out um, to make sure we have enough for everyone um, in doing that. But most of our clinics, um, we typically bring a few extra vials with us. So we, we are opening those up um, to walk-ins also. Um, we will be also um, working with some of our businesses, um, kind of doing some promotional type things at different events. More to come as we finalize information um, with that over the next couple weeks. That is all I have, unless you guys have questions for me. Any questions, board? Julian, what's the state rate? I, I know you said we're 82 per 100,000. What's the state at? 
Oh, that's a good question. Um, and um, I would have to go pull that information real quick. I did not pull it. I apologize for that. Let me go grab it here real quick. And I can pull this date. So the state currently, um, they only pull a, a total state average um, on it weekly. So it looks like this is from 421. They were at 185. I will tell you there are certain regions. Um, we know Michigan is struggling with um, quite a bit of outbreaks. So some of our counties up in that, that kind of northwestern portion of the county are seeing higher incident rates. Um, you know, others are kind of fluctuating up and down depending on what's going on in their community. So right now we are significantly lower than the, than the state. Questions? And then you were talking about vaccinations at the school and just just to have a have a conversation about that, you know, whenever vaccinations today start to be administered in school, just just talk a little bit about uh, I, I assume we're talking about vaccinating staff and students or students and staff. How is parental consent taken care of, Julianne? Yeah, so parental consent is required for anyone under the age um, of 18. So an 18 year old, even though they still may be like a senior in high school, they're considered an adult to us. So they can actually sign for consent for themselves um, on it and could be vaccinated. Um, for Claremont County Public Health, we do require that parents be present for vaccination um, on it, unless there's some extraordinary circumstance for something. But um, the majority of time when we're out and about in the community, we do require um, the parents be present, a parent or a legal guardian be present with the 16 and 17 year old consent forms are required for everything. Um, even if you come in as a walk-in, you still have to fill out all the same paperwork. You just do it on site um, and it's done electronically. Um, we go ahead and fill that out to be able to get consent from parents for anything. Um, for those 16 and 17 year olds, similar to what we did during H1N1 um, and other, you know, we, we vaccinate, I don't think people realize we vaccinate in school quite, quite frequently for maybe back to school clinics. Um, again, we did this years ago for H1N1. So it's the same process that we use for that. Um, as we kind of move forward, we will do, you know, staff, it, it, anybody in the community, most of the staff has already had a, multiple opportunities to receive vaccine um, through some clinics they did early on because they were one of the priority groups um, with it. So the majority of what we're picking up now is those that maybe um, didn't have that opportunity for whatever reason, um, and then really trying to target those 16 you know, 17, 18 year olds um, at this time. We do anticipate it sometime in the future that they'll drop the age for some of the vaccines. Um, and then when that happens, we'll be back in communication with the schools if they're interested in doing and um, sponsoring some additional clinics as we move forward. And then just an attaboy, I, uh, I had a wellness check with my cardiologist Monday and he had stated that uh, him and his family went to the center at the University of Cincinnati and he was very, very impressed with how that was organized and how it was uh, administered while he was there. And he, I just wanted to make sure you were aware that when, you know, health professionals, you know, see that you're really going out of your way to, you know, make that a, a, um, a great experience. I, I just make sure the staff knows that. So thank you. Thank you, I will pass that along to them, thank you. Thank you. Julianne, I'm curious, since they lowered the age limit, do you have an idea how many 16, 17, 18 year olds have come through in Claremont County? Yeah, so there, there is um, data on the state's website that looks at vaccination of those individuals. So the, a little bit of the difference in the data, I see what we do, so who we um, administer to as far as those 16, 17 year olds on it. Um, however, on the state's dashboard for vaccination, they did give an age breakdown range and they will do that by county. So you can always go on and click on our county on it. Um, right now, it looks like, and so it's just, the only thing you have to keep in mind, the way they break down the age range is like zero to 19. They don't specifically put 16, 17, 18 year olds on there. Um, but in our zero to 19 category on it, um, we have a little over right now 2,600 individuals who have been vaccinated. Um, keep in mind the data kind of takes a day or so to get updated with, with all the vaccines that have been administered. We are not the only ones administering to that group. Um, anyone who has Pfizer vaccine can administer. It is the only vaccine that is currently approved down to um, 16. 
Connor for their 16, 17 year olds. Um, Moderna and J&J &J are all gonna be 18 and above with that. So we can kind of do see some of that data. Um, I can dig a little bit deeper into like who we administer to, um, but as far as what all of the providers are administering to, what's on the state website is really the best data source for that. Okay, thank you. But to, to ease those that have a question about their children at school, you know, for them to be vaccinated, it requires a consent and, and like you said, for a parent to be actually present. So, I mean, I, I think I think that kind of, you know, eases everybody's mind as far as, you know, years and years ago when kids used to be vaccinated at school. Yeah, I do want to just point out though, there are a couple of our schools who have um, health centers already in those schools. Um, so again, health sources already in Williamsburg and they're in West Claremont. Um, they already have process in place where they could vaccinate without a current parent being there. Um, that's up to those providers on how they run the practice. It is not a requirement to have a parent on site. Um, it is a requirement to have a parent consent in order to do it. Um, so they do have to, whether it's a paper consent, you know, um, our, our consents are electronic through all of our, our um, registrations that we do with it, but there are other providers out there. Um, but in general, we typically, we will not vaccinate without a parent or guardian being present. Thank you. Thank you, Julianne. Appreciate the report this morning. Under county staff and elected officials discussion, Mr. Eigel, do we have anything else this morning? Yes, um, during the regular session of November 4th in 2020, the board tabled two items from that agenda and they are still on the table. So I'm asking the board to consider removing item number 18 and 19 contained in the non-consent agenda of the regular session of November 4th, 2020, relative to establishing and creating the local the Morna Cove stormwater district and establishing stormwater utility fees and cost allocation plan. And I'm asking the board to consider removing that from the table. Did we want a discussion first on that this morning? In order to have the discussion, we'd have to remove it from the table first. Okay. Then I'll entertain a, a motion. Are we going to add this on first though? We haven't added this morning, correct? You're just, it's just a motion, motion. to remove it from the okay. table. Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion um, to remove um, from Items 18 and 19 is contained non-consent agenda of the regular session of November 4th, 2020 from the table. Do I have that motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. And for discussion purposes, I have Suki Sheets with the engineer's office, so I'll turn that over to her. Suki? Morning, Suki. Morning, board. Um, back in November, we had, I had requested that the board table this because we had some last minute information from the new HOA that was established for the Lamorna Cove subdivision. Um, the HOA has evaluated the stormwater district and the potential and the benefits and have decided to not pursue a district. So I just wanted to get back to the board on these two open items and um, let you know that the HOA does not want to pursue establishing a district in their subdivision. Thank you. Are we going to have a reading of each one individually? Yes, we then? have to take those individually and Ms. Curry is going to do that. So item 18. Do we need to add those to the agenda? We voted to bring it off the table. Should we add it to today's agenda? I think bringing it off the table is opening it up for consideration. I don't think we have okay. to add it. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yep. Thank Got you. it. Thank you. Okay. So um, this was item number 18 from the November Fourth, 2020 agenda. This was a recommendation to adopt resolutions 17220, resolving to one, establish and create the Lamorna Cove Stormwater District to provide services related to the management of stormwater runoff in accordance with the general plan of drainage attached thereto as Exhibit A and made a part thereof. Two, to appoint the Claremont County Engineer as the Director of the Lamorna Cove Stormwater District pursuant to the Contract for Engineering Services heretofore ratified by the Board on May 6, 2020, pursuant to in compliance with Section 31514 of the Ohio Revised Code, and three, that the boundary for the Lamorna Cove Stormwater District is defined as those parcels described in Exhibit B attached thereto and made a part thereof with the understanding that the aforestated services will only be provided within the said boundaries as identified therein, pursuant to and in compliance with chapter 6117 of the Ohio Revised Code. 
forward you to the reading of item number 18, and this is, would be a motion to remove item number 18 as previously tabled. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing. The discussion would be as they, Suki, they no longer want to do this, correct? Correct. Okay. Yes, they, they have a um, um, property management group that was in contact with the HOA, and he um, reiterated to me in February that they had decided not to do this. They will take the stormwater responsibility upon their, themselves as the property owners. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Um, um, Commissioner Painter? No. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. No. Did we vote to, um, my so, apologies. So, so the recommendation or the motion was to reject the adoption of the resolution, is that correct? That is correct. So you guys want to, is that, that was the motion? The, the, my understanding is that it was, is, is what we do not wish to go forward with this. So at the time the board would need to um, decline, they would need to um, vote no to establish that they do not want to move forward with resolution 172.20. Because the original motion was for Correct. the adoption. Correct. Mm. So now we should be, so we're rejecting it now. So it would be a vote no. It would be. Yes. Okay. Can, can we, can we roll it again, please? Mich Commissioner Bachelor. No. Commissioner Painter. No. Commissioner Corcoran. No. Sorry, I misunderstood. Well, I, I misunderstood it also, so don't, that's all quite right. all right. Okay. We've got another one to do. That's okay. Right. We sure do. So we'll <laughs> we got a second chance. Okay, second shot. Okay, go right ahead, Holly. <laughs> something we don't do every day. That's right. Um, this was the um, second item that was tabled. This was number 19 from the November 4th, 2020 session. Um, this was the recommendation to adopt resolution 17320, resolving to establish the stormwater utility fees and cost allocation plan for the Lamorna Cove Stormwater District, heretofore established and created to provide services related to the management of stormwater runoff in accordance with the general plan of drainage within the established boundaries, therefore, pursuant to and compliance with Chapter 6117 of the Ohio Revised Code, with the aforesaid fees and plan more specifically described in attachments A and B respectively, attached thereto and made a part thereof, and for which said fees and costs shall be charged to any and all property owners in the Lamorna Cove Stormwater District effective December 28, 2020. Now board will entertain a motion to not move forward on item number <laughs> 19 because it was previously tabled. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? No. Commissioner Bachelor? No. Commissioner Corcoran? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Suki. Thank you, Mr. Igel. Now we're moving on to item D on our agenda, which is consent agenda. We received this in advance. Are there any corrections or deletions this morning on the consent agenda? None. Hearing none, could I have a motion to approve? Make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Now we're moving to the nine consent agenda, item number three. This is a recommendation that the Board of County Commissioners adopt resolution number 059 21, resolving to approve payments to vendors in the total amount of $2,047,514.66 as set forth in the BCC approval invoice report for checks dated April 28, 2021, BCC directed prepaid invoice reports and or the procurement card transaction report as presented by the county auditor on April 28, 2021, and further authorizing the county auditor to issue warrants for same pursuant to section 319.16 Ohio revised code. Do I have a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item number four, County Engineer's Office. Okay. Item number four is a recommendation of Doug Royer uh, to reduce the weight limitation on County Bridge number M001 0.18, which is located on East Loveland Road in the City of Loveland. This will be a reduction from 25 tons to 20 tons. 
Board, you've heard the reading of the reduction needed for that bridge. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I. Is this a permanent reduction or just temporary? It will be. This bridge is scheduled for replacement in 2022 to 2023. Um, so this will be permanent until the new bridge is built. Great. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Item number five. Thank Morning. You. I'm Lyle Bloom, director with the Claremont County Water Resources Department. And item five is a recommendation to authorize Claire B. Corcoran, president of the Board of County, County Commissioners, to execute change order number one to the contract with in situ form technologies, LLC, out of Chesterfield, Missouri. Uh, this is uh, this is previously ratified by the board on July 29th, 2020. And for project number 6402-62008, relative to the collection system rehabilitation 2019 project, located in Miami Township and represents a decrease in the amount of $83,396.71 for a total adjusted contract price to date of $435,286.29 for additions, deletions, and or modifications thereto. Uh, this is the final change order for the, the project. Board, you've heard the reading of the final change order for and this change order number one for the InstaForm Technologies LFC relative to the collection system rehabilitation 2019 project. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item number six. Item number six is a recommendation to award the bid for project number 6401-60180 relative to the Weaver Road uh, water partition project located in Stonelook Township pursuant to the plans and specifications to Smith Corp Incorporated out of Cincinnati, Ohio for the lowest and best bid received on March 4th, 2021 for a total amount not to exceed $23,300.64 and to execute the contract relative thereto, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein, and the award of bid therefore, and contingent upon the release of the required purchase order. So this uh, Smith Corps bid was 94% of our engineer's estimate. It's a small project. This is only uh, 180 feet of eight inch water main to serve two properties on Weaver Road. Board, you've heard the reading is presented by Lyle Bloom, and this is for a bid award for Smith Corps Incorporated for Weaver Road Water Petition Project. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Item number seven. Take this one. I don't. Karen Shear on the line. You know. Is Kim Shearer with us this morning or not? Okay. Mr. Eigel? Yeah, this is a recommendation to execute a subgrant agreement by and between the Board of County Commissioners and the Claremont County Mental Health and Recovery Board to provide the necessary funding in the amount up to $275,000 for the funding of our CASC program, effective for the period of 930-2020 through 929-2021, which will be automatically extended for the period of 930-2021 through 929-2022, should the Claremont County Mental Health and Recovery Board receive year two state opioid response funding pursuant to and in compliance with the scope of services identified as Exhibit A and in concert with SOR funding heretofore awarded to the Claremont County Mental Health and Recovery Board by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Board Mr. Eichel has read the not, item number seven for the subgrant agreement claremont county mental health and recovery board for the funding and extension do i have a motion to approve so moved is there a second second any discussion hearing none call the roll please commissioner painter yes commissioner bachelor yes commissioner corcoran yes item number eight prosecutor's office good morning jason hi uh, good morning everybody uh, item number eight is a recommendation of myself, Jason Fountain, uh, system prosecuting attorney with the concurrence of Mr. Eigel, uh, to authorize Ms. Corcoran, president of the Board of County Commissioners, to execute uh, three satisfactions of mortgage, uh, certifying that the terms of these mortgages and promissory notes uh, that they secured have been satisfied, uh, and authorizing the recorder to release the mortgages of record 
uh, for these properties listed. Uh, these properties all relate to the septic system rehabilitation financing program. The mortgages were made in concert with the Ohio Developmental Services Agency Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program. Um, the terms of the mortgages on these three properties are, are satisfied on uh, these mortgages from 2016, and it's time to get them off the books. Board, you heard the reading of item number eight is read satisfaction of mortgages for the septic system rehabilitation financing program. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Item, Thanks, Jason. item number nine. Um, I'll take item number nine. Um, item number nine is the recommendation for the Board of County Commissioners to execute amendment number two to the contract for employment of Mark Landis with the firm of Isaac Wiles Burkholder and Teeter LLC out of Columbus, Ohio as legal counsel to represent the Board of County Commissioners in its official capacity and to advise it on legal matters in and as it relates to Christopher Hicks versus Claremont County Board of County Commissioners filed in the Claremont County Court of Common Pleas and designated as case number 2018 CVH 00058 pursuant to and in compliance with revised code section 30514 and further to authorize Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to execute amendment number two to the professional services contract by and between the board and the law firm of Isaac Wiles, Burkholder and Teeter, LLC, for representation as described therein, previously approved by the board on December 11th, 2019, and amended on October 21st, 2020, which represents an increase in the outside legal counsel compensation cost of $25,000 for a total revised contract amount not to exceed $60,000. Board, you've heard the reading of item number nine, recommendation amendment number two to the contract for employment of Mark Landis with the firm of Isaac Wiles, Burkholder, and Teeter, LLC. And this is to advise it on legal matters in and as it relates to Christopher Hicks versus Claremont County Board of County Commissioners, which represents an increase in the outside legal counsel compensation cost of $25,000. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item number 10. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine, Yvonne Smith. How are you? Uh, Yvonne Smith, Benefit Plan Coordinator for Claremont County. Is my recommendation with the concurrence of Greg Bigfoot, Assistant County Administrator, and Sandy Tahat, Human Resources Administrator, to execute the client services agreement by and between Claremont County, Ohio, and USI Insurance Services, LLC of Cincinnati, Ohio, for the provision of professional broker and consulting services relative to the Claremont County Employee Benefit Program, as described in the scope of services identified as Exhibit A, attached thereto and made a part thereof, for an annual amount not to exceed $75,000 effective for the period of 6-1-2021 through 5 31 of 2024 with an option to renew for subsequent successive 12-month terms pursuant to the terms and conditions set forth therein and in compliance with section 307.86 f of the ohio revised code Board, you've heard the reading of item number 10, and this is to execute the client services agreement between Claremont County, Ohio, and USI Insurance Services. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, before we move on there, how this is a change from Haran to USI Services. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's the proposal. And, and I just wanted to say that, you know, Haran has done an excellent job and you know, thank them for their service and, and yes. make sure they know that we were very appreciative of, of the services that they provided to the yes, county. Yes, they have been a, a good source for us, a good partner for 18 years. Wow. And um, uh, nothing no negative to say about them. And um, it just, uh, when you've been with a vendor for that long, 
sometimes you need to step back and have some different eyes look at your process. And this is a good, and insurance is a competitive, medical insurance is a competitive environment. So, Correct. you know, companies are always moving in a direction to find a way to better serve their clients. So. Yes, and we did a full RFP. We had five respondents, three, the top three, we had come in and do an in-person presentation. And uh, USI was just, um, they presented some things that we haven't seen before, we haven't heard of before. They have, um, they're much larger companies, so they have a lot more resources. They have a lot of in-house services that um, Haran does not have. Um, for instance, we can have them come in and do an in-person HIPAA training to uh, all of the people here. Um, that is a service that Haran doesn't have. We could uh, probably uh, contract it with another outside service through Haran, but with uh, USI, that is an included service. Um, they are offering us an app for all employees on their phones to be able to see their benefits, pull up things, this app will be managed by USI. It won't have to be managed by me. So right now, I'm managing the online. I'm managing the county website and, and things. So this is a uh, benefit that the employees will see firsthand. The information will be at their fingertips. They will update it as needed. They will use that app to push out information um, as it becomes available, new information they will use it to um, notify employees of open enrollment, you know, reminders and things like that. Um, that by itself is a huge benefit that we don't currently have. Haran did offer us something similar, but it was at a cost and it would be managed by us. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, as I said, it, it, we just felt the time was right to take a look, have, have our benefit plans looked at by a fresh set of eyes. Understood. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your work. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Item number 11. Um, I believe I'll take that one again. Holly, <laughs> your day. This is the recommendation of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to acknowledge that on April 12th, 2021, the Board of County Commissioners received a copy of Resolution 2021-08, heretofore adopted by the Board of Trustees of Union Township on April 8th, 2021, requesting that the Board of County Commissioners vacate a portion of Klepper Lane Township Road 252, situated in Union Township, as described therein, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 5553-045 of the Ohio Revised Code, to accept the preliminary report of the County Engineer dated April 20th, 2021, in and as it relates to the aforestated request, and to establish the date, time, and location of the public hearing, therefore in accordance therewith, public hearing to be held Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, at 11 a.m. local time in the Office of Board of County Commissioners here in Batavia, Ohio. Court, you heard the reading of item number 11 and the recommendation. Um, this is for the Board of Trustees Union Townships. Um, I'm sorry, this is to do a vacate of a portion of Klepper Lane Township on T-252 in Union Township, and there'll be a public hearing will be held on Wednesday, May the 19th, 2021 at 11 o'clock a.m. here in the Commissioner's Office, 101 East Main Street, third floor, Batavia, Ohio. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Are there any additions now to the non-consent agenda this morning? We have actually two uh, additions for consideration. I'd like to take them one at a time if we could. Um, the first uh, proposed add-on is a designation of a reappointment to the Claremont County Public Library Board of Trustees. Okay. 
Do I have a motion to add um, the designation of appointment to the Claremont County Public Library Board of Trustees? Do I have a, a motion to add that to the agenda this morning? I'll we'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. So the recommendation is to reappoint Judith Kosika to serve on the Claremont County Public Library Board of Trustees, effective for the period of 4-28-2021 through 12-31-2021, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 3375-22 of the Ohio Revised Code. Or do I have, I'm asking for a motion to reappoint Judith Kosika to serve on the Claremont County Public Library Board of Trustees, effective for the period of 428-2021 through 1231-2021, pursuant to compliance with section 3375.22 the High Revised Code. Do I have that motion? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Any other add-ons? Yeah, the second uh, consideration for the addition to the agenda is an executive session pursuant to Section 121.22 G1 of the Ohio Revised Code to consider the employment or compensation of a public employee or more public employees. Or do I have a motion to add to go into executive session to the agenda this morning? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Now for the motion, I'm asking for a motion to go into executive session pursuant to section 121.22 G1 of the Ohio Revised Code to consider the employment or compensation of a public public employees. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. We're going to go into executive session. We will return shortly. Thank you. We have returned from executive session. No decisions were made. This time we're moving on with our agenda. Um, we've covered our staff, county elected official discussions. Any other items to be added onto the agenda today? No other items, then we'll move to member comments H. Members, any comments this morning? None. None? Hearing none? Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Do um, I have a Commissioner Corker? Yes. If I may, um, can we just briefly discuss the May 10th, 2021 um, regular session? I believe the board may have a conflict, and um, I had suggested perhaps we could move session to 11 p.m. that day. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. That's May 10th. May 10th, 2021, regular session. That would be Monday. I believe that's a Monday. Do we? Yes, sir. Monday. That, Holly, too. Um, we do not. I don't. I just think it's something that the board needs to acknowledge that we're going to move session on Monday, May 10th, um, from 10 a.m. to 11. All right. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Bachelor. Sorry, with you. Too. That's that's fine. Okay. Now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Thank you for joining us today, and we will see you next week. Thank you very much.